Hey everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. It's so great to be back with you. I have this sunny little mandala here on a Santorini stone that Cap Courier sent me and I absolutely love these stones. So we're going to go with this little stone today and the Pantone colors of this year, the 2021. So I'm going to go and look here because it's this illuminating yellow and this lovely gray. And we're going to check out on Pinterest to see um, if we can find some palettes using these colors. And I'll add them to my color palettes page here on Pinterest. And then we'll have a few to choose from. Well, I have to say, in looking at the Pinterest pages, it was kind of slim pickings. There's a lot of color palettes that are incorporating extra colors such as green or pink, peaches, blues, um, and with the grays and yellows. But I really just want to go more basic and just use the grays, the whites, the black, the yellow. <clears throat> so I think the one that has this sweet little bird here <laughs> is the one I'm going to kind of go off of. And we're going to try that for our stone today. So already you saw the first picture, so you already know what it's going to look like. But I'm going to be using some of the Gen Crafts metallic paints. And then they also sent me their pouring paints to check out, on which I did a Valentine pour and a couple other things that you guys might have seen. And they're already thinned, so there's no need to add to these. No mediums, nothing. Don't water them down. We're going to try them out here for dotting and see how they go. <clears throat> so I have my little circle here, and it's about two inches in diameter. And I'm just going to start off in the center with a black dot using my two millimeter dotting stylus. And then I'm going to grab some of this delicious silver. And we're going to do some swipes here. So I'm going to make my plus sign. And I'm just starting all the way out at the edge of my circle and pulling it into the center. <coughs> The tool that I'm using for those of you who are new to my channel is called My Etcher. I sell these all in my shop, so I'll put links to everything I use in this video in the description here. And that way you can check them out. So this brush is called the Angle Spot Detailer. It's a size 10, and it's made by Princeton. So I'm just mixed a little bit of the palest yellow in with some of the titanium white to get that lighter color. Okay, and this lovely color is yellow pearl. It's a little bit darker. And then I'm going to grab some Indian yellow, which is just a shade darker. So you kind of get an ombre directionality with the colors here. And I'm just painting them into circles. These paints are fairly fluid, very fluid. So they're very easy to work with and paint them into a circle here. So I'm going with my etcher here and I'm grabbing some of the gold. And again, these are fluid, so just put a little bit on the end of that etcher, and I'm going to switch ends to the other side of the etcher, and just pull it out into that teardrop shape. 
See how fluid it's already spreading? <laughs> I'm just gonna thicken that one up a little. So you can see they're they're very, very, very fluid, which is great for pouring. They're great for dotting too. So you just have to be aware that you're not gonna want these other dots are gonna be dry before you start coming in with other elements. Otherwise your colors are gonna bleed into one another and it's gonna give you a whole other look. Not necessarily bad. It's just a different look than I'm going for today. These are the metallic ones. With the gold. I think I said silver earlier. I misspoke. I meant to say the iron pearl. And you can see now that it's dry, it's, it's a little tinge of a different color other than silver. The metallics are so shiny too, it tends to wreak havoc here on my camera. So bright it just reflects and it has trouble adjusting, but I'll list all the colors that I use as well. I'm going to try to go with a different light source here and see how this looks. So this is the pale yellow, and I'm going to use my etcher to do a couple swipes up to a point here up above. We're going to do that over each one of these. And again, I waited until the gold was dry, so these aren't bleeding into one another because the gold was already dry. But had that gold been wet, they at the ends there where they meet, they would be bleeding into one another. Just like in the pouring, acrylic pouring, when you're mixing colors, they just blend right into one another, which is what they're meant to do. So it's it serves its purpose for that. But these are great for dotting. I'm enjoying these. That didn't go quite where I wanted it to go, so I'm actually going to erase that one. <laughs> you guys won't see it, it's just a silicone tool. I just squeegeed it up really quick while it's still damp, and then fixed it. But you see in other videos that I have when I fix a mistake. This doesn't have a background, so you have to do it really quickly. Um, otherwise when they start to dry, you basically have to sand them or scrape them off. Going back to that Indian yellow here for the outskirt dots. And now with the etcher, I'm just using black, just the straight up black on either side of those to put a couple of dots here. That's something with each piece too, I try to carry the colors throughout the entire piece just a little bit here and there, so it just creates a little bit more balance. Alright, so generally if I have a painted background I use my etcher to just kind of sketch these on for a guideline, but today I'm going to use pencil um, because I don't have a background and the etcher will not scratch into these beautiful stones. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to use a mechanical pencil, and I like these because the white eraser, you know, makes it easier. It doesn't smudge. You can also use artist erasers that gets rid of pencil easily. And I'm just very lightly drawing the guidelines in here because I want it to erase easy. And we're just going to do this little scroll S curve. I called them in the past, I think, <laughs> just for something different. I like these two because it gives you a little bit of negative space and you can see the sparkly stone around them. I love these stones. I don't know if it's mica in it or what it is, but it's so pretty and shiny. <coughs> okay, now, now with the paintbrush, I'm just going to start in the center with my larger dots. 
and then as I come around the edge of the scroll, I'm just going to let up lightly to do smaller dots. So thicker in the middle, and then as you go around the curl, you're just going to let up on the pressure on the paintbrush to get those smaller dots. And you can see with this as opposed to a dotting tool, you don't have to constantly be dipping. It just goes by pressure. And by all means, if you have the dotting tools, go for it with this. Just start in the middle of that S and work your way out. And as you work your tool around, the dots will get smaller because the paint is coming off the tool. So don't think just because you have dotting tools you can't do this design. You can. You can do it! You guys are awesome! I'm so excited about how many people are getting into dot art this year. And I know we're, a lot of us are stuck at home. <laughs> but there's so many creative people out there making beautiful art. It's just amazing. It's so awesome to see. So while I'm doing these, I just want to remind you all quickly to just leave a comment in the bottom if you like this video, say hi, tell me where you're from. It helps to kind of compete if you want to keep seeing the videos. It helps the algorithm to know that there's engagement happening on my videos. <laughs> so they'll be seen. So if you want to help me out, it's a free way that's easy. All you have to do is just say hi. Leave a little heart, whatever you want to do. But also if you have any thoughts or constructive criticism or whatever questions, um, feel free to post them in the comments. And then also if I don't get to them, there's so many people doing this these days. There's a lot of people helping others, which is so awesome to see in this day. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there and it's such a blessing to see people helping one another. So you're in the right place for a wonderful community. And so after these are dry, I'll just come back in with that white eraser to erase the lines. And you can see I didn't stay on my line for some of them, especially that last one. I can see it's dipping down a little bit and it's not the way I wanted it to go, so I probably won't follow my guideline exactly, but that's the beauty of drawing a guideline too, is you can take a look at it before you put the paint down and decide if that's exactly where you want to put your design. Also, oh my gosh, some amazing ideas. This is not my idea. Somebody on one of the Facebook groups suggested putting saran wrap over your dry stone and painting on it so you can visualize the pattern without guidelines or whatever. You can visualize the pattern and paint on just the saran wrap and then if you don't like it obviously just you're removing the saran wrap either way but it's a great way to practice and plan for a design for your stone so if you don't have a lot of stones or even on canvas or whatever you're using wood pieces tiles that's such an awesome idea I wish I knew who to credit that, that it was not me. So saran wrap, clear wrap, plastic wrap, I'm not sure what they call it in other countries. Saran wrap I believe is our, like our Kleenex or tissue, you know, it's the brand name. Yeah, see this one was off, so I'm just gonna tuck it around here on my own. because. I don't know why, I just didn't want it to go that way. It'll be fine because I'll just erase them afterwards. It can get a little confusing, like an optical illusion a bit, to throw your eyes off. So, you know, if you're bothered by that, always uh, you could just erase it and redraw your S curl. But you can see there how fun that is, a little addition to that design. And now I'm going to grab some more of the pale yellow that I had mixed with the white. And we're just going to do kind of, because this iron pearl is a little bit farther out, it kind of comes to a point out here. So I'm just going to put some swipes with our etcher down in towards that Indian yellow dot that we put up there. 
a darker yellow. And you're starting with the larger part of each swipe at the end of these large iron pearl swipes. And you're just going to drag it down until the paint runs off the tool, basically. If you don't have enough to reach, you can always just grab a little bit at the end of the tail. And then, just like this, and just extend it up. Or even dip from the fatter part and then drag it out a little longer. But it's a fairly easy thing to fix and with this tool I can't tell you guys how easy it is to make the swipes and the teardrop shapes and everything. And so you can always just reshape it too with the smaller end. These stones are so smooth too it's really easy to just drag it out. There's not a ton of bumps you know, natural stones, a lot of times I use granite or other ones. Sometimes I have to seal them first just to kind of get a smooth surface to work on, but these are so lovely. So this is actually just the titanium pearl, and I'm going to just put a dot up in here. I was going to do more than that, but I don't have enough space in each section to do what I wanted to do. So we're just going to put a dot of that in each of these. And then again, you'll have the negative space with your beautiful stone shining through around it. I think too, these stones are so shiny with the mica flakes, it's wreaking havoc with my lights and the camera. Alright, so I'm just kind of debating what, I know I want to keep adding to the outside a bit. I need to like kind of bulk up the shape a little bit. And in the top and the bottom I don't have a ton of space, but I'm just going to practice a couple here. I want to do the little mukas. I think that's such a cute bird. <laughs> Somebody who does Zentangle told me that's what they call them, these little mukas. I think I'm just going to... In my mind, I'm deciding whether I want to start them at the top of the Indian yellow or do I want to start, start at the top of the um, iron pearl. Do I want to start talking like I'm from back home still? All you New Englanders, all you New Englanders know the Boston accent, I'm sure. Well, that was a plump and juicy one there. Let's get a little more on the next one here so I can even it out, but I am going to go from the Indian yellow above here, up and around, and then I'm just pulling it lightly towards the space of those pale yellows. Maybe that one was a little too juicy, but thankfully the Indian yellow is dry, so it didn't bleed into it. See, I'm just going to grab from up there so I can pull it out longer. There you go just like that. How are y'all doing at this point? I know it's a little bit faster and with the etcher it's pretty quick through this design but feel free to pause and go back and take your time. Don't feel like it has to be rushed. It's easier to shape the tails if you're just taking your time to put the placement of the paint where you want it to go. Alright, so I'm going to grab some of that iron pearl again, just to bring it out to the edge of the piece here. And that one was a little thick, so I'm going to get it off there. It's a little dry in my palette, so it's thicker. So they do thicken up after a bit. There we go, that had a little bit of a smaller tail on it. So I'm just starting at the top, where these all meet, and I'm just dragging it along that pale yellow swipe that we did earlier. And 
And these really kind of create movement for this piece, as small as it is. I mean, the stone is probably only about three inches long. Our circle was two inch diameter about, about two and a quarter. I'm just going to grab from these while they're wet and put a three dot little element out the end here, just like a sprinkle. And I don't want to cover up this stone too much, like I said. These are just gorgeous, which is another reason I didn't put a background on it. It also allows for the black to contrast on the stone a lot easier. All right, I think, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just going to grab that pearl one more time here. And I think I'm just going to draw it like you would, almost a number two. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to do just a long swipe with this one, and then we'll I still have a little bit more space that I can come in with the pearl. Or the white after, and we'll just do a little number two, kind of like a mukha, a backwards mukha. So this one runs parallel here. And then we'll also put a little dot of that pearl in the middle. Let's see the normal lighting. Plus I also look at it on the screen when I do this because then I can see other things differently. It's a different point of view. So I am going to grab that titanium pearl here. And it's just like drawing the number two. You start like you're going to dot and then up and around. Up and around and then pull out the tail. So I'm about halfway down so it's shorter and fitting on my stone a little better here, but we're just gonna pull the tail into the head of that gold one. And then I think we will be done with this design. All right, so these are the colors I used. There was also a regular pearl thrown in there. And I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. And if you stay tuned for a minute here after the video, I am going to just do a quick varnish with the Liquitex gloss so that you can see what that looks like. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting. So I get asked often what kind of varnish I use. Do I use resin? Why is it so shiny? But I use the Liquitex acrylic gloss varnish on almost all my pieces. That includes wood like this, canvas, stone, it has a UV protectant in it so your colors won't fade. I absolutely love this varnish. So that's what I'm going to use on these next couple pieces. And you want to use just a sponge brush and put it on quick. See how fast I'm doing this? You don't want to overwork it at all because the more you work it, it's going to start to get tacky and cloudy. You just want to do it as fast as you can, get out the bubbles quick, and then leave it flat to dry. And then this is our little stone we did today. It's going to get a little varnish here. I like to pour it on because then I'm using the brush even less. Um, you can even pour it into your brush. Like I said, just quickly, quickly, quickly go over your piece and then get all the drips around the edge and let it dry. So this is a pour that I did on a handmade plaster, plaster and I just used these same paints, the GenCraft paints. And it kind of reminds me of a galaxy. It's already very shiny because it's the metallics. But I'm going to protect it here with a clear coat because I'm going to use them for coasters. And you can see it goes on a little cloudy, but it will dry so clear and shiny. 
it's amazing. So I'm just working my way here around the outside to get the drips, have it tilted a bit, and then pop the bubbles. And then I just make sure that uh, there's no hair or anything because we have a little kitty cat that likes to come down here. <laughs> so get all my drips down there off the bottom because they will dry like in a bump if you don't have it smoothed out underneath. And there's about a couple bubbles I need to pop but I'm going to use a, the etcher to do that after, not the brush. And then this was wood so I'm just using what I have left in the brush because I hate wasting things. And there's enough here to just do this little heart. And this one is concrete. I'm going to go with a bigger brush because this is a very large stone. And I'm just going to pour a ton on here because I really want it to fill in. Some of these dots are very raised. <laughs> and now I want to just make sure I get it in the cracks there so that it fills in the spaces. And almost every time I honestly only do one coat of this. If you guys watch my previous really early videos, there's one in there where I talk about how I put these out in the garden outside and we actually hit one with our lawnmower one time. My husband was not excited about it, but it bent the lawnmower blade, but it didn't do any damage to the stone. And they've been out there 10 years now and still have not faded in color. And you wouldn't want these colors to fade, right? This is one of my favorite stones that I've done lately. And this one was quick creep. Alright, there's our glossy little guy. So you can see they dry with that shine, that same shine. It looks like resin. So here's the final of that stone we just did. Look at that shine. Just so shiny. And it, you can see too, it didn't dull the mica you can still see the shine in the stone and then I don't varnish the backs I like to just keep the back blank if I can especially on the natural stones all right well I hope you guys enjoyed doing this stone today let me hear about it again in the comments say hi and as always happy painting I look forward to hearing from you and to doing more videos this year take care